Welcome back to the Smuggler's Den. This is episode 58. I'm your host, Tiny Grimes. And you know what? We're going to do what I was going to do a long time ago before he got stolen. We have a new permanent, well, quasi-permanent co-host. The Rebel Spy, Mike himself. So you know what, D-House and the Jedi Trials, like Yoda did with the tree that held the knowledge, we're going to burn you to the ground. Are you in on that, Mike? Are you ready to burn D House and the show to the ground? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, considering it's it's also my show. But, oh, right, right, right. Uh, Sorry. Wink, wink. You're the rebel spy. I got oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you. Right, you yeah. can't announce it. What kind of, what kind of uh, insider <laughs> what kind of spy job is that? Exactly. Wow, I'm the worst at this. That's my bad, Man. Mike. I didn't mean to out you you're like that. Just so, you're so bad at keeping secrets. D House, we love your show. Keep up the work. Mike is not <laughs> tearing you down from the inside. He's not. <laughs> It's totally not. All right. Uh, quick apology <laughs> to those of you who hate other content. Um, if you look at the Smuggler's Den feed, there is actually a new podcast on there called Welcome to the Crucible. It's for FFG's new um, card game. I don't. Is it a CCG? I don't know. I hesitate to call it that. Uh, so if you are upset about this, don't worry. It's going away in about two. There'll be about two more episodes. Just while we get the feed going, um, if you want to jump over to that feed, it's going to be Welcome to the Crucible. Apparently, it's everywhere, but the only one that matters, <laughs> iTunes. Mike starts with, it's everywhere. Well, it's not on iTunes. Well, it, yeah, okay, it's not on iTunes, it's on Google and Spotify, and apparently Tanya doesn't know what Spotify is, so that, that that's a personal problem. <laughs> I don't think so, Mike. I don't think so. My knowledge is, is overwhelming. All right, so that's housekeeping. Let's move into our weeks. We both went to a store champ, and I love when you, I, and John Bruno all go to store champs together because mm -hmm. I know three of the best players in all of SoCal are going to be there. Now, I want to start with something, and then we're going to hear your story. But I just wanted to say this. Yeah. I was terrified, okay? This is my one store championship for the season. And what I didn't want to do is run into a specifically anti-mill deck. So I tried to kind of keep it a secret that for the last several weeks I've been testing it. Of course it has to go and win Gen Con the day before my <laughs> event, so I look like a total jerk face. Uh, but I have to message Mike, the one guy I'm afraid of, and say, Hey, Mike, um, my collection is so incomplete. Could I borrow a Pacify? It's certainly not for a mill deck. No. no. So I was a little terrified <laughs> you were going to bring anti-mill. John knew I was playing Mill, and I thought he was going to bring anti-Mill, and I was like, oh my god, if I lose two games to my bastard friends who know I'm on Mill just to screw <laughs> me, I am not going to be happy. <laughs> All right, thankfully that didn't happen, and let's, let's no. turn to your side of the store championship. What was your thought going into it? Well, my thought was not, let's counter Tiny Grimes' deck. Woo! Uh, you should know me better than that by now. Um, I went into it thinking I, you know, like the weekend before I had won with, uh, Solo Sabine, which was super fun. And, um, I just kind of wanted to play something different. Um, I usually don't stay on the deck, on the same deck for very long. Uh, I got real bored. And so I wanted to put together a, uh, price like vehicles deck, which I was kind of messing around with at the beginning of uh, way of the force and was really having a fun time with. Um, but, um, between like, uh, rehearsals for this, uh, show, show that I got coming up and, um, just work and everything like that. I just didn't have time to put a deck together. Um, and so I just brought one of the ones that I had already had put together, which was Dooku Sienna, um, with profitable connections. And I had played that a little bit at the beginning of Way of the Force, but not a ton. And, um, yeah, so I figured I could still, you know, have a decent time. And um, I, I honestly wasn't really worried about, like, playing, like, uh, doing well. I, I wanted to play well. I didn't necessarily care, like, where I placed. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but I was just there to have fun, hang out with uh, you and John. Okay. And um, I guess my question is, why Sienna... Why not somebody stronger? Was it just the thought that this is an all-in on Dooku? I'm going to be able to get a big weapon on Dooku. I'm going to use Sienna's special to turn Dooku to even more damage with him turning himself. Was that your theory there? Um, well, my theory was, um, like, Sienna is the cheapest red... Well, like, one of the cheapest red characters that you can use leadership with. Um, mm. 
And so it was like, you know, leadership price of failure, ready Dooku, and then every time you ready him, you guarantee a, you know, a base side to okay. go with his, like, electro staff or whatever. Um, so it, yeah. Okay. So in theory, seemed decent. Had you tested it much beforehand? Not a ton. I played probably, like, five games with it max. Okay. Um, yeah, so not, not a lot, and it had been, like, a while. It's been probably a month since I played it. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, I, I had just put it together. Um just to have a way of the force deck, um, in addition to the, um, I, I also had Leia, Yoda, and, um, no, yeah, well, Leia, Yoda, and the Sabine deck. Um, I didn't want to play Leia, Yoda, because, um... Oh, I thought well, you were saying all in one deck. I was like, I'm no, pretty no, 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 sure no. that is not a legal deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, last week's Sword Championship, it was either Leia, Yoda, or Solo Sabine, and I went with Solo Sabine. Okay. Um, but the Leia, Yoda deck was really interesting to me as well, um, but... The, my my pacify went to you, so I wasn't going to play that deck. Oh, uh, <laughs> so wow. it's all your fault. Um, no, I, I I was, yeah, I I don't know. I just kind of got bored of of you know the decks that I had been playing more, and I wanted to play a deck that I didn't have as much uh, you know experience with just for fun. So, how did you end up doing on the day? Oh man, I did super well. I went uh, one one and three. My my one win was a buy. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, and did you play think, John Bruno in the first round? Yeah, in the first round. Okay. It was it was closer than it than it could have been, but um, yeah, I just just couldn't hold on. He uh, wisely, um, as as he does, um, killed Sienna on like round two mm-hmm. before I got a chance to press a failure. Um, and then it's just Dooku against you know uh, Maz and. Yeah, I, I killed Moz first, so it was like uh, it was versus yeah. Rex and the clone, and it was just uh, yeah. ugly after that. Yeah, um, you sucking was bad for John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, John. <laughs> so John was three and zero. I was three and zero, and I think if we were on a different team, he would have just scooped to me because I hadn't won a store champ. But that's not how we roll. We <laughs> we not only do we play it out, we like get in super serious mode because yep. one of us is going home the champ one of us is going home the chump uh, <laughs> we're very clear on that so we did play it out and he was able to make it close for a bit I, I felt like I had a really good matchup going in but never mm-hmm. being able to kill his guys let him do more and more ridiculous things each round as he got like Rex yeah. with Rex's blaster on him, and then he's able to do all these shenanigans where he rolls, and then he gets to roll the other guy, and then he gets to roll Maz, and I'm like, do I get any actions in here, or what the <laughs> hell is happening? Uh, it's a pretty cool deck, actually. I think we might make a video about it uh, early next week or something, but that it was nice. a really good deck, and he was 3-0, and and I was 3-0, and and he lost, and he got third, and he was like, how the heck did I get third? <laughs> and we were thinking about it, and it seemed me. like you were the reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my 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 bad, John. <laughs> it's, all right. it's all right. He'll be all right. The, the guy who got second was uh, a really nice young man. I don't know. I'd guess like in the twelve to fifteen range. I'm not entirely sure, um, but yeah, he was he was a good guy. So I was happy to see that that he was able to have success. I was I was mm-hmm. his only loss, and, and he was a good guy. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to turn away from your fun performance. We'll call it that. <laughs> Did you win anything with the raffle? No. Wow. That's a rough day. Yeah. Those are, yeah. Those are a lot of raffled things. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I was there to have a, have a fun time, and I definitely had a fun time. So it was, right. it was worth well, it. Then you won. You were a winner. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was the actual winner. Different. A little different. <laughs> uh, but I also brought. <laughs> You know, possibly the best deck in the meta. We'll talk about well, that later. Uh, Yoda, Anakin, Cassian. Cassian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was really the only deck I'd played for the last three weeks seriously. Like, and by seriously, I mean I got like seven games in with that deck versus hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> the Mandalorian deck, which I was my other option that I had two games in with. <laughs> and uh, those were the two ga- two decks in the finals. So that made me feel pretty good, actually. I was like, okay, so I haven't really been playing Destiny, yet I still identified the two best decks in the meta, and those were my choices. That makes me feel good. Um, and so, yeah, I, I brought the mill deck, and thankfully no one was like, hey, nice deck, net dick, and dork. Um, <laughs> so that was good. I think it yeah. helps 
that I put out a video about that deck, like, I don't know, three weeks before Gen Con or something. So, I don't know if Mike was mad about that when I posted it, or, or <laughs> if they were even on the deck yet. I haven't heard the whole story of, of when they got on it. But yeah, that deck's really good, and it basically destroyed everyone all day. Yeah. Like, that, there weren't any anti-mill decks there, and I feel like if you're <laughs> not playing anti-mill or, like, a really aggressively strategy, you're, you're in big trouble. I played against two vehicle decks. The oh, one gosh. vehicle deck, it did, uh, I think it was 21 damage on the last turn. Whoa. 21 indirect. And it looked like he might win, except for I had lots of answers. But the answer I went with <laughs> was... Uh, um, uh, the uh, the one cost force, force illusion, illusion. Sorry, second chance wow. uh, force illusion. <laughs> I threw it on Yoda. One of his sides was a seven, and and Yoda had eight health left, and so I was just oh, like, gosh. You're Here's, like right. "There's seven, and, and then good game." Uh, so he, he was a little sad about that, but it was it was a fun fun day overall. Um, it's it's always fun being on a really strong deck. Uh, when I did the regional in February. I like literally hadn't played a game of Destiny in six months and settled on a deck that was not anywhere near the best deck. Mm-hmm. And I got top four with that in a really big field, but it was it was a much harder day, right? Like every game was nail biting. This was just mm-hmm. kinda like, okay, cool that I win. Kind of breeze through okay. it. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Game. So it was, a, it was a it was a different feeling. Uh, but it was mm-hmm. good to get the win. Now I now I have even more motivation to um Take yet another sub tier two deck to a regional, and uh, <laughs> that. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, you have any more store champs in you, man? Um, yeah, I'll pro- I'm gonna go to at least the one at Fire and Dice, um, nice. and that, that that's probably it to be honest. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, for me, it was if I didn't win this one, maybe I could make it to a second one, but it was not looking good. Um, mm-hmm. especially since John was like, sure. And then he was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to even this one this weekend. I was like, what? That's, what are you talking about? And then he was able to do it, but I think he's done for the season too. And so many, it's hard to believe. What would we, how many do you think we have? I would say we had 20 in the area. How many do you think? That that's feels right. Uh, there were a ton in Southern California for sure. And if you had San Diego in there, then it's like. You know, even more, but... 150, probably? Yeah, so somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe I could only get the one. Oh, yeah. well. All right, well, let's talk about Gen Con since I alluded to it. We talked about it last time. I predicted that the Yoda, Anakin, Cassian deck would win. It did win. Hmm? Hmm? Mm, Pretty good. It, it was close at the end. I don't know if you saw there was... um. An unfortunate misplay. I won't call it cheating because, to me, cheating implies intentionality. Uh, but the winner did take two extra resources in a pivotal moment, so that was oh, wow. a little bit dicey. I don't. I hesitate to even bring it up because I'm not. I'm not at all trying to call him out because um, it happens. Like we've seen this happen regularly, and it would be remarkably stupid to do that on stream. So obviously, right. <laughs> What the reason I'm bringing it up is because I'm a little shocked that no one saw it, right? So you had Mike watching, who is, you know, just really on top of everything. I'm stunned Mike didn't see it. Um, Zach is a really great player. There's a judge sitting there, so that was a little surprising to me. I can definitely understand the players not catching it because, you know, game three, the championship, their blood pressure must have been through the roof, right? But the commentators, they're just chilling, having a good time. Um, so I'm, I'm a little surprised it didn't get caught, uh, which is really unfortunate. I don't know that it would have altered the game. The nice thing is, with Yoda on the board, you're making quite a bit of money anyway. It's not quite the same as like a regular deck getting two more resources, but it's a little unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that? Um, no, I mean it'd be you know interesting to hear, hear sort of like the like what, what actually went down or, you know, but I don't know. I mean, like some, sometimes that, that kind of stuff happens and like, what do you do about it? Yeah. Um, yeah. so I, I guess my question to you is, do we worry about that? Do we say, okay, judge, we need like three judges for the finals and they need to be, 
on top of everything. That just can't happen in the finals of a major event. Or do we say, guys, chill out. It's an FFG game. There's literally nothing <laughs> on the line other than pride and fun. We don't need three judges. If something's missed, oh well. Yeah, I I tend to be maybe somewhere in between those two. Um, like, especially if a judge is sitting right there, like they should definitely be paying attention to stuff like that, like obvious stuff that um, just straight up shouldn't be missed. You know what I mean? Um, so I yeah, like I I don't think that it should be like you know three judges sitting there just like scrutinizing every little thing um and not that not that, that would necessarily even be bad it's just i don't mm-hmm. think it's necessary in this game um i mean because in know. major sports that's what they'll do right so it would be yeah, like yeah one judge is in charge of monitoring resources at all times right another right. judge is in charge of watching for sleight of hand tricks and the decks and and then the other judges of it is is in charge of like watching the on the board action. Mm-hmm. You can certainly you can certainly do that, and it would replicate, I think, more closely like a sporting event. But I don't For know. Sure. I've never played Magic at the highest levels. I don't know how does that work. Do they just have one judge there, or do they have a team of judges? I you know I actually think that they have a team, um, especially when it gets up to the higher uh, the higher you know bracket like seeds and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, Magic, however, has you know like. A million dollar prize pool, whereas Fantasy Flight does not. Like Star Wars, you're, I mean, you're playing sometimes for. Sometimes you get a patch. Like, what, what's the difference? Yeah, yeah exactly. What, like, or a medal? I, I, I don't know what the difference was between first and second in this uh, particular. I don't either. My guess different. is just a trip to Worlds. Yeah. And if it's a paid for trip big. to Worlds, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. But it might not be because it's only Gen Con. It's not Nationals, it's Continentals or whatever they call it now. So, to be honest, I don't know what was on the line. Probably a card design would be my guess. Uh, Oh, gotcha. Which, Which, I mean, like, that's... It's a significant prize. It's just, I don't... Yeah. Like, I I don't know the degree to which it needs to be taken, like, that seriously. Um, But that should be known ahead of time, I think, is my my stance on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I lean more in the direction of... FFG has been very clear that their games are not serious competitive games and that we take them very seriously. So I'm not saying we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I don't feel like they're unclear about that, right? Like they could easily have a prize pool of three boxes for the winner. Like that's not that hard. They make the freaking cards. Like Mm -hmm. what, what I think they should have is three boxes of the next set to the prize winner that they've had early. Yeah, sweet. And they give them to them because then those have real value. You could spell, yeah. s- you could sell those worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> Instead, they're just like, "Here is a medal ceremony. We forgot the medals. We'll mail them to you. <laughs> oh, we mailed you the wrong medal. <laughs> like that's FFG to me, and that's fine because that's what you know you're getting. Yeah. Um, so I'm okay with it. I don't love it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I would love." to somehow mesh together FFG's, like, we'll say roll casually mentality, stealing Mm -hmm. the X-Wing thing, and uh, Magic's ability to, you know, do what they do. If you could somehow take that for, like, the top four at Gen Con and suddenly change FFG, I think it'd be great, but they're Mm -hmm. not unclear about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was not planning on talking about that, by the way. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about Gen, the results of Gen Con. I think what we saw was the domination of Mill and specifically Yoda, Anakin, Cassian, and people freaking out and people saying, I hate Mill, and people saying Yoda should be nerfed. What are your thoughts sort of generally about this result? Um... I mean, I, I'm not, as everybody knows, I'm not a mill hater. So I, like, it doesn't really surprise me that much because it is really strong right now. Um, it doesn't necessarily really bug me that much because I don't mind that it's that strong. But I do understand that other people, you know, really dislike it and the fact that it is sort of at the top. Um, and, and I, I mean, theoretically, it's at the top by a lot because it was, like, what, three out of the top four decks? Um, yeah. It was at least two out of the top four decks, and 
it's yeah like it, when when you see a deck be that consistent the question is like is it the players or is it the deck um my suspicion is that it's a, a bit of both in this case um so if if all the best players are playing you know the mill deck then that's just what is going to win so yeah i i totally agree with this problem if it had been mike and joe and i don't know another really top level player and those were those three people we're talking about i would agree like maybe it's just the players but mike's great um and, and by the way i'm not saying andrew's not great the person who won and the other person who got in the top four but they're not sort of like at that same level right of like established players to the point that whatever they bring you expect them to win um and so i feel like it it's the deck right like the players had to play the deck well but i think that deck is pretty dominant but the real question to me is was it dominant because it was sort of hiding a bit and people were a little surprised how good it was or is it just that good that it beats everything i think i think it's just that good i, I don't think uh it would like it i mean it's been out there for a while. Um, I don't think yeah. that it, it was a surprise deck. Um, might have been a surprising choice for, uh, um, like, you know, the Hyperlux crew to bring that that deck. But um, I think pe- people already knew that it was good. Um, it's, I, I again, I, I haven't, I haven't actually played it yet, so um, I can't speak a ton to like how it plays and interacts and stuff. Whereas you, I'm sure, could because you've played it a, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and John has as well. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like, I, I don't know what this means for sort of like the way of the force meta. Um, and I, I suspect that national or, uh, yeah, no, Nova will be, um, kind of where everything gets cemented a, a bit more. Yeah. I think Nova is going to be really interesting because yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of mill, and a lot of anti-mill. Yeah. And so what that's left with, <laughs> is there a deck that beats both mill and anti-mill? And anti-mill, right. <laughs> I don't think there is, but the yeah. person that solves that mystery, crown them now, <laughs> uh, because that's what you're going to see a lot of. Uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. let's talk a little about this mill deck and why it's so successful then. I think the main reason, like almost hands down, is removal is so good and so efficient mm-hmm. at the one and two cost level that it's just absurd. Like the beguile is crazy, um, entangle is crazy, easy pickings is crazy. Like there's yeah. all these insane cards where you're like, you rolled well, I blew up your whole board for two, and you're like, well, at least you can't do anything else. And you're like, really? Because I got Yoda and I just got two more dollars. Suck it. <laughs> it's like ah, you can't both get money have removal that destroys the board, and then also at the same time as you're getting money, be milling. Like, that doesn't seem right. fair. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're you're working towards your win condition while you're gaining all these resources to put your opponent off of their win condition. Yeah. Um, at, like, all simultaneously. Seems yeah. Seems pretty good. Yeah, it's just, I, I feel like this is that moment where we've been building to this, where as the more sets we have and the more good removal comes out, it just keeps stacking and it gets redundant. And a lot of decks are just like, ah, I can't really afford to for removal. I can only have so many removable cards. And this deck is just like, I can play them all. Yeah. Uh, I can play a lot of removal. And then the cards that it uses for mill are really, really efficient. Uh, and I think that's really strong as well. Like force meditation to be able to just mm-hmm. pop off to chaining it off of Yoda special. So I, I guess my question is, are you worried? Like, do you think it's too strong? Do you think we, sh- or not we, FFG should step in before Nova and do something about this deck? Or do you think they should say, it's a good deck, but we haven't really seen an event where going in it was the deck to beat? How does it function in that scenario? Yeah, I, th- I definitely think the latter. I think, uh, like, one tournament, even if it is Gen Con, isn't enough to really declare a deck, uh, you know, totally busted or not. Um, like w- when you compare this to last year's Gen Con, mm-hmm. um, you know, th- this is no Pomas or Rainbow Nines, in my opinion. Um, and it's very good, but I, I just don't see it. I was just going to say that. Like, this is what happened last year, right? Rainbow Nines, they were like, let's ride it out one more event. <laughs> and then Nova was like, 
we're all playing and they're like, well, that yeah. was a screw up. Well, I'm kind of terrified we're going to repeat the exact same thing. But there, I mean, like, what, like there was no counter to Rainbow Knights, really. Like, there are ways and counters to this deck, right? At least. Okay, we'll talk about that in a so. minute. I, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, like, you, you, you know the, the deck better than me. So, like, like, what is good against this? Nothing. But we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so that is my fear, though, is that if we ride it out, we're just going to have Nova be, you know, seven of the top eight, six of the top eight will be this deck. One will be the counter to it. And one will be like whatever a great player brings and goes, cool. I'm awesome. I made it. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little worried. Um, all right, let's start here. It, let's say we decided we wanted to do something about it, which I, which by the way, I'm not saying we have decided that, but I've heard a lot of people say the answer is Yoda. And I just want to postulate what I've postulated for. I'm going to go with almost a year now. Specials should not be able to chain. And what I mean is the way the core rule should work is whatever your die is showing at the start of your turn is what it must be resolved on that turn. So you can certainly use Yoda to turn something to a special, but you wouldn't be able to chain it. To me, what it does is it both drops the power of Yoda and it slows the game down slightly as the game gets more and more off the rails. Any thoughts on that? Uh, I think that's reasonable. I, I don't see a uh, huge downside to doing that. Um, I mean, it changes a lot of decks, yes. um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think that it, it makes sense. Um, on the other hand, like to a certain player, like chaining specials and kind of, you know, just like going, going fast like that kind of, it feels sort of visceral and it, you know, it's got that, that dopamine hit. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if it's worth keeping in the game um, because of the potential for it to just be broken, basically. Um, yeah. Like, I feel like there's a lot of space they can't explore because that is a possibility. Like, the, the specials that exist in the game, especially on the hero side, with Yoda being a character, um, yeah. have to be worse <laughs> than they would be if you couldn't do that. Yeah, and I think the cool thing is you have a way to even keep what you were saying. Like, you can have plenty of cards. Like, All In could just have right. a parenthesis that says, you know, dice can be turned to any side and resolve this turn. Like, right, you, can, right. you can have workarounds. So you can, you can specifically design cards to still special chain. It's mm-hmm. just not the default, like you said, that hinders design space, that makes these cards that are good and just you know, throws them into overpowered territory. I feel like mm-hmm. there's a way to still do that in a more reasonable manner. Yeah. Do, well, here, here's a question though, too. Does that make like, like, okay, so this three wide mill deck is using special chain to its advantage, yeah. but a similar deck that's using all this, you know, removal and stuff like that only gets better if there's no special chaining because um, it's harder to, oh, well, cause then it's, it's easier to mitigate your opponent's dice. Um, it's easier Maybe. to, because it's like, you know, you, you, you chain, like you use a Yoda special and then you turn your other dice, but you don't get to resolve it. And then your opponent just removes it next round. Um, right. So. Yeah, I mean, it depends, right? Like, it's, it's like Sabine sword. or Cad Bane, which what they're doing is they're still cheating the system, but they're doing it. Yeah. I don't know if you want to say in a purer way or a different way or however you want to describe it. You can still mm-hmm. cheat dice out. There's just less ways to do it, which to me is good. I think yeah. action cheating is still out of control, and I've always thought that needed to be reined in. And I just think that's one area where we can rein it in and then, like I said, add the errata where we want to to still make it possible, but just rein it in. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's certainly one way to fix it. Um, yeah. All right. Let's talk about answers? Question mark? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're the one that said, "Hey man, I, you can beat it. Go ahead, Mike. You're going to an event. I'm bringing a mill what? deck. John uh-huh. is bringing a mill deck. You <laughs> need to win it. What are you bringing?" Oh man, I don't know. Um, something fast, something action cheaty. Yep, I agree with that. Um, something that can get through a second chance mm-hmm. in like. You know, a, a half a turn. <laughs> yep. Multiple second chances, force illusions. 
Yeah, something that doesn't days. interact with 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 damage or with uh with the removal in the deck. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm really curious to try this Sabine deck against this. Mhm. We played it. Um, what we found was it came down to could you mill off Never Tell Me the Odds or not. Mhm. And if you could, I could totally see that. Then it was an easy win. If you could not. Uh, it was more in the 50-50 territory, where if they got one and they could get 15, that was often enough to close it out late game, because she would have several weapons on her by that point. Yeah. So, yeah, it's that's a tough one. Um, maybe Cat Snoke? Cat Snoke, yeah, that was maybe. the other one I was thinking of. So here's the crazy idea I had, Mike. What if you ran right, a deck it. that was like two Ancient Lightsabers, Two mm-hmm. Luke's protections and two <laughs> Vam braces. The problem is, is that a good deck? Right. I don't know. You know I haven't. I haven't actually sat down, laid out the characters, and thought about what kind of deck that would make. But if you could make a deck that can't be milled and actually beats other decks, that right. sounds like a promising place to go. The problem is, I don't think you can just play two Vam Braces or two Ancients and think that's going to be enough. I don't think that's anywhere close to enough. Yeah. You know what's what's really interesting um, that I, I've, I'm just thinking of is when I was playing in the Spirit of uh, Rebellion meta, like at the end of Spirit of Rebellion, beginning of Empire War, um, I was playing Villain Mill and the deck that would give me the, the hardest time um, was Hera vehicle deck because um, mm. they just roll in hand Hera, they roll in Maz, they yeah. focus Hera, it's a special, and then they put the vehicle onto the table, and then you can't win by mill after that. Yeah. Because it's just going to bounce to their hand at the end of the, the round. So true. it could be really interesting if people start playing Hera in a response to this. Hmm. And I don't know how consistently you can like get into that late game scenario where you just can't lose, um, especially against uh, this deck. Because um, like if, you, if you're rolling Hera and then... Like your opponent just mitigates your your die, like that. That's it. Yeah. So that's my word. It's yeah. Um, so I wonder if there's a way to make a deck like that, like like some some kind of hair vehicle deck, consistent enough to be able to do that. Um, does flames to the past only hit upgrades, or is it any card? It's any card. Oh god, that would be such a brutal counter. <laughs> that would be pretty You're funny. You're like, yes, I can't lose. And like flames to the past. Okay. <laughs> you you would have to have like a couple one ofs. Yeah. And then you'd have to have those be the ones that didn't get milled. Whew. Yeah. You what, could what, also actually, yeah. run a faster deck with some of the cards I was talking about, maybe. And then any card that brings things back to hand from the graveyard with a battlefield. That's mm-hmm. another possibility. Right. So, I don't know. But that, that's, like... That that's still not really a way to win, right? Because like you just uh, get to the situation where you have no cards in your hand or your deck, and you either claim to put a card on top of your deck, right. and then your opponent mills it, yep. or you don't, <laughs> and you lose. So <laughs> the nice thing is, though, in that scenario, if you kill Yoda and you kill Cassie, and there's only Anakin and Anakin's pod, racer, pod racer and yeah. bartering, <laughs> they can't actually hit your deck at that point. So the, the, I feel the, like it the, gives the, you. It gives you an out pod, to play to, right? You can. Can't the pod racer hit the top of the deck? It can. <laughs> it totally can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. The pod racer's not out there, Mike. Your opponent is an All idiot. Right, drew it, discarded <laughs> it. Oh, Mike. Remember when you talked about just bringing anti mill deck? <laughs> oh, boy. Remember, though, uh, yeah. Luke's protection seemed like a really good answer to mill for a while. I don't know if it is now. There might just be too much hitting the deck at this point. Yeah, I think there is. Um, between Yoda's two dice and Cassian's die and Anakin's oh. pod racer and, like, every other card in your deck. That pod racer. Um, so good. Yeah, pod racer seems It does crazy. everything. <laughs> uh, all right, well, well there we go. Destiny Community... The gauntlet has been thrown down. What <laughs> beats this deck? You know what else is... We, we talked only a little bit about what makes this deck so good. But having three characters with so much health, two mm-hmm. of them being yellow, two second chances, 
two force illusions, you have to do such so a much spurred yeah. amount of damage. Yeah. But even if, if you, you do it like, fast, if you think the force, it's great. If you think the force illusions still like heal three damage, basically, yep. it's like sixteen extra health. Yeah. And then like each of your in, like easy pickings is at least like three damage, and then each of your you know, entangles is like four damage, and then it's like, like how, how are you supposed to, you know, deal enough? Yeah, I, I don't know. Crazy. It, just, it adds should, up. So should we, hard. should we bring up uh, pacify, and and just like how insane it is in a deck like this? Yeah, it it's it's really insane in any deck to be honest, but it's super insane in this deck. It's Give like them there, two shields. There is no downside. Yeah. Give them two shields, remove any die you want, and then you know what? If you get in a massive pickle late game, you remove yeah. your own die and get two shields. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that card Just is... Absolutely yeah. savage. Yeah, I only had one of it, and I was like, do-do-do, I really only own one? And then I didn't <laughs> want to ask anyone for one, because I didn't want anyone to know I was on mill, because this is back when I didn't know I was going to win Gen Con. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> have to ask it's too good it's too good of a card to only run <laughs> one of them yeah it would have been a hilarious deck list i post them like yeah my, my store champ win- winning list it only has one pacify everyone's like why, why'd you run one pacify because i only own one because i'm a noob what do you <laughs> that want would, that would be like uh, only running one four strike in a beta raider <laughs> deck <laughs> madness <laughs> oh man yeah, I don't. I do not. To be honest, I don't have a good answer. People have been asking me, "Can you please make a video for how to counter this?" You're talking <laughs> You're like, to the wrong guy. <laughs> I have not found a deck. Okay, okay. This. So, so if if we can't counter this deck, how how do you make it better against the mirror? Mm, there you go. Uh, my strategy was to run two Vam braces to kind of try to give them some things to think about but i think for a good player that's not that tough because there's so much mm-hmm. hand removal and deck removal like i i don't think a, that bothers a good player that much mm-hmm. that's fair so i think the way to to win the mirror is to control yoda's dice every single time mm-hmm. like i think that's just what no matter what yoda rolls out you entangle his dice every time you yeah. beguile them when Cassian rolls a gun, um, you play like dice that remove guns that can only like <laughs> you. You just remove all of the dice. But then the problem is, if you're using removal to remove dice, you're milling yourself. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played the mirror yeah. enough. Well, I think I would still prioritize what I prioritize. I would want um, Anakin's Pod Racer. I would want Force Meditation. I think Flames to the Past would be really good in the mirror. Yeah, you can get rid of an Anakin's Pod Racer pretty easy because they're always discarding the second one. Yeah, I think um, that would be really strong. Yeah, that would be pretty interesting. I think if you were going to a tournament and you thought that the majority of what you would see would be this, oh, like maybe you get rid of one or two of the second chances because they're totally dead in the mirror. Same with Force Illusion. Um, <laughs> they which they is totally, totally are. Totally but they're crazy, but they're, so they're totally good. dead. I mean, they're, they're, they're insane against the other decks, but if you're only playing against this... You can't like, go into a tournament assuming the whole field is playing this deck, Mike. Wait, why not? That's not how it works. No, it works, Mike. <laughs> well, you may be right. The answer may be one illusion, one second chance, put in two flames to the past. Um, I still think Scruffy Nerf Herder is good in the mirror. I noticed it was not oh, yeah. on the Gen Con list, and that mm-hmm. surprised me. That's such a pro player card. I would think the top players would be playing it. I got to think they tested it thoroughly and decided it didn't add enough. I just can't imagine that's right. Yeah. I love that card, and it, it was just, it was always wrecking, right? It'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, uh, you clearly need to get a weapon this turn. Well, let's let's take that weapon away from you. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so our answer to what's the solution to Mill is take a break till the next set. <laughs> Seem right? Seem right? <laughs> But you know what, Mike? That doesn't fix anything because nothing even rotates out of the deck other than second chance and yeah, force illusion that, you know what? and lesser I, removal. That is actually the scariest thing to me because 
90 percent of this deck is all legacies and way of the force the only things that, like you lose some amazing cards like you lose force illusion you lose second chance um you lose hyperspace jump yep that's kind of it mm-hmm. like you lose of the cards that matter mike yeah the the like the gen con list only even played one over confidence that could so easily be replaced yeah <laughs> yeah so. uh and that's the scary part it's like yeah like we just said, maybe they don't need to do anything about it. Maybe they do. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they do if there's nothing, like, this is not rotating out. You can't even look to that. Like, mm-hmm. most of the problematic cards in the game right now, Force Illusion, Ancient Lightsaber, we're looking to rotation and we're going, it's going to be a whole different world. Yeah, it may be a whole different world where, where Mill wins everything. <laughs> Especially if they're pushing vehicles like it looks like they are oh in the next goodness. set, um, or or vehicles. Ve- <laughs> yeah, vehicles might have might have a rough a rough time. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna say it, Mike. Special chaining, let's dump it. Let's keep uh, it in limited forms, printed on some yeah. cards. Let's dump it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a fan of that. I think it opens up some really cool design space that um, isn't there at the moment because it doesn't need to be. Uh, um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. Okay, good. That's two. So, uh, you know, put in the comments if you're on board with it. And if you're not, put in the comments why. I want to yeah, know yeah, why. Yeah. I well, want to hear the answer well, to why we've got to have special chaining on everything and not just select things. Yeah. Because remember, FFG can do whatever they want. They can put on any card they want. Yes, you can chain with this card. We specifically tested it for that. We like it here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's like then, then you know, you, you can put a character with a special that just says like turn a character or like turn a die to a side showing a special and resolve it. Like, yeah, that would be totally irrelevant in in this world. But that seems like a cool, interesting, simple effect. Sure does. And you can no longer say, well, that would change the core rules. They did that with upgrades just to fix nines. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, at least that's what I'm going to assume is the answer. Maybe there was a. Maybe since the beginning of time, Lucas had been sitting at his couch every night going, oh, we should have limited upgrades, overwriting. But there's not a a moment to do it yet. And then there was. I find that hard to believe, though. All right, so here's my final question about this whole Gen Con Mill deck then. If we don't have an answer for Mill, and if Mill is the best, is the meta solved? Are we just sitting on our hands till the next set hoping, and then the meta is already solved for that, too, because Mill is still the best? What do you think, Mike? Uh no, I don't I don't think so. I think that there's still decks to be discovered. I think uh that we'll see some some new stuff pop up. Um or I'm just an optimist and we won't see any of that. <laughs> I feel the same way. For some reason I feel like this meta's still new. Yeah. Well it's I mean it's only been out for what, like like a month? I don't know, yeah. Like like, like a month and a half? Feels like it's been out forever and it feels like it just came out at the same time. Yeah, it's really weird. That that that's one of the problems with uh, just the fact that there was such a big delay and like sort of the, the the long drawn out like spoiler season where all the cards go up on tabletop simulator and then right. you've played with the cards for a couple months before this set even comes out. Um, yeah, just le- leads to these these scenarios where it feels like it's solved, even though it may not be. Yeah, I really don't think it is. I think there's some something out there that's interesting. The question will be, will people have the guts to try to find that deck, or will they just say, this mill deck is busted, I'm just bringing the best version of this mill deck for the meta that I predict? Yeah, yeah. I think we'll have to see on that one. Yeah, we'll have to see. All right, Mike, I want to bring up an idea I had. All right, Now, if, if I was an entrepreneur, I'd just do this myself but that's not my bag. <laughs> I think there should be a Star Wars Destiny rental service. Uh, and what I mean by this is you can rent cards to make a deck for those of us out there who maybe don't play that often in person, but we're going to a tournament. Suddenly you're scrambling, you're calling all your friends, they don't have the, the cards you need, or worse, they're already using them. <laughs> I think there's a market out there for someone to rent Destiny cards. Am I insane, Mike, or do you think this market exists? I think it certainly could. I think that there's potentially services like that for Magic. What what, what people do for Magic is um, they'll go to a big event, 
at the big event, there are vendors there that are selling singles. They'll buy the things they need for that event, and then they'll sell them back to the the you know the the vendors like after they're done. Um, and that is not something that exists in Star Wars Destiny. Um, so I I don't know. I, I I could see it. I would probably like if I knew that that was a thing. Um, I might you know not stock up on two copies of every single card that I'm probably you know only going to use a few times and rent a deck instead. Yeah, would you do that at a turn? Let's say I went to every single store champ in LA with, you know, mm-hmm. eight of each card. Would you do that? Would you rent a deck at the event and then sell it or buy a deck at the event and sell it back to me? Um Yeah, maybe maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That's really yeah. interesting. I'd be nervous. Like, what if that guy doesn't show up? Right, right. That's, you know, like all, all the all the logistics around it are, are the, the hard part. But yeah. if if a service like that was reliable and was, like, cost effective, yeah. totally I would do it. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting. I think, I guess our point is, I think there is an opening in the market. I feel like this game might be big enough to warrant that. And I feel like you could put a hold on their credit card for the cost of the deck you know, like in addition to the rental fee, and then when they send it back, you remove that hold or whatever. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how exactly that works. All right. Well, I'm just going to say this now. Artificery, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I want to rent a deck for my next event. Get on it. <laughs> yeah. Totally seems like something that they could pull together. All right. I think that's going to wrap up the show today. Um, as an outro, let's talk about what your what your projects are that you're working on, where people can find you. We'll start with you, Mike. All right. Um, you can find me um, on the Jedi Trials as well with uh, my, my good down. friend D-House. I mean, it's a great <laughs> show. I'm not tearing it down from the inside. <laughs> um, you can also find me on the brand new Keyforge podcast, Welcome to the Crucible. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good one. Okay. Um, you may also find me on uh, potentially another Keyforge no. podcast. No, you're with, not doing uh, this to me again, Mike. With, <laughs> I called with, dibs on with my, my my good friend D House and oh, also Jay from uh, Double Blanks. I'm <laughs> gonna have a new nickname uh, for you. It's not gonna be the Rebel Spy. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be coming soon. And then, um, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I've been playing a lot of music lately. If you guys like um, sort of alternative rock music. Um, my band is called Dusk, and we have some music up on Spotify if you are inclined to check it out. That part is great, but where are you playing live? Where can they catch you? Uh, you guys can catch me uh, on the 29th of August okay. at a place called Molly Malone's in Hollywood. There you go. It, it's like an Irish pub. And then also on the 15th of September at the Troubadour. Whoa. Yeah. Is that I don't know how this works anymore, but is that like a three minute set at the Troubadour or do they give you a long time no, on we'll, stage? We'll probably have at least at least thirty, probably more like like nice. thirty five, forty, yeah. Cool. Well uh <laughs> if you're a big fan of the Rebel Spy and you like his music, this is this is a great opportunity to come out to LA. Maybe he'll put yeah. you up in his house. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, depends how much you're going to tip him at the, uh, <laughs> maybe you're going to buy 20 of his CDs. <laughs> do you sell CDs at your shows or do you sell MP3s? We, we have these like little, like business cardy things with like a little Spotify code, uh, um, which you wouldn't know what that is cause you don't know what Spotify is, but, um, I've heard of it, Mike. I just don't <laughs> use it or know anything about it. <laughs> um, but we, we, we are playing a show tonight actually. Um, and we, we did get CDs for it. I have no idea if they're going to, you know, sell or not because who wants a CD in today's age, but me. we're trying to, we're, okay, yeah, well, then, there, there we go. Then I'm sure, I'm sure that there will be certain people that, that, that actually do want a CD. I, I think sometimes people just like to walk away with something physical. Yeah. So, I always yeah. felt good about that. Like if I really liked a show, I felt great about exchanging fifteen dollars to the performer as a tip, and then I get to walk away with a physical memory of that show that is also audio. Right, for sure. I have a lot of CDs like that. I look at my collection of blue CDs, and I'm like, 
who the hell are these people? <laughs> I do not remember seeing this person show, but clearly I did. <laughs> All right. Well, you can find me on my YouTube channel. You can find me on Twitter at Tiny Grimes Games. I've been streaming more at uh, Twitch Tiny Grimes, a variety of things. I've streamed some Fortnite. That was mostly me dying. Um, <laughs> some Keyforge, some uh, Octopath Traveler, some Destiny. So it's certainly not exclusively a Destiny stream, but if you want to hang out, I'm happy to hang out with you. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm on a new, uh, uh, Key Forge podcast with the Rebel Spy here. Welcome to the Crucible and having a good time just with, with card games generally, man. It's, it's kind of a problem I have that <laughs> if there's a new card game, I want to try it. Like I want to try the Transformer game out for everyone out there that wants me to, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely not playing another CCG. I have a firm rule I don't have infinite dollars. I am a teacher. Uh, therefore, I can only play a max of one at a time. Yeah, yeah, that is totally fair. Because they are pricey. That they are. Yes. Well, that's going to wrap up another edition of The Smuggler's Den. Hope you liked what you came for. And, uh, and until next time, you should keep smuggling and then keep smuggling some more. Goodbye. <laughs>